Yesterday, we said the magic cycling content word, gravel bikes, which simply means I need to capitalize on the views and the new subscribers from that video by creating this video. Also using it as an excuse to finally put together the new track lacrosse build. Okay, any final guesses on what is in this box, who it's from, what it might be, on what exactly the new track lacrosse frame set is? means there's still time to guess. That's this. This really, in my opinion, should come as no surprise. Posad and I, we get along. I'm not paid by them to sing their praises. I just like that they make everything that's already in my head. This is just like a really sick version of what the silver fixed gear was, and it's gonna be so much more capable. Having to put the headset in, I'm a little bit less pumped about, but it does give me an option to, to maybe play around with different forecasts. I don't recommend that anyone do what I'm doing right now. Okay, this is gonna be a bit of a bizarre wheel build because I've got spokes that came out of a geared hub. I have a single speed hub that is symmetrical, that is going together. However, I've got a rim that is non-symmetrical. That is to say that the spoke holes are actually off to the side a little bit, which I think is gonna work out in my favor because I'm going to need the rim to end up centered on my symmetrical hub and I'm gonna need two different length spokes for that. And in my head, I'm thinking that my drive side spokes, depending on how I wanna put the rim on, will need to be the longer ones and the non-drive will need to be the shorter. And that should center it with like decent spoke tension. This is not a wheel I'm particularly concerned about being perfect. I just want it to be like, not bad. So I'm just gonna put it together and just see what happens. So next time you're ever wondering if or why or anything about whether wheel building is still important reference this video. I very much stand by saying that every tinkerer should be able to build it. You know, I think a little bit of praise is in order for me having not cut this all the way down and I have a spacer on top. That's personal development right there. Now let's go ride this freaking thing. Gonna fall out already. Come on. These little bumps in the ground are seriously the reason why I came all the way over here. Because it's fun to hit them. And it's weird to do it when your wheels won't stop making your cranks move. Though possibly after just building this rear wheel, the ain't care attitude would not be advisable.
Okay. So as far as I remember, these rims will set up tubeless. So uh, I think that's probably the next step. It's getting rid of these god dang inner tubes. So that little pinch flat incidents like that don't happen again when you're getting way too sick. And before my fun got cut short, the idea behind this vlog was going to be talking about further what yesterday's video was about when it comes to gravel riding and taking on what a gravel bike actually is. My argument was going to be, and still is, that even something like this, something as simple as a brakeless track bike with space for bigger tire and a little bit more off-road geometry is indeed a gravel bike. Hell, it's easily the most accessible gravel bike that anyone could get their hands on. Not a whole lot of money, not a whole lot of extra knowledge that you need to get into or learn. Probably the only slightly easier version of this would be the rear wheel being a coaster brake instead of a fixed gear. And honestly, that sounds like a real party to me. That might be something that this bike becomes someday. Fail. You would not believe the amount of guilt going through my stomach right now riding on this flat tire. All right, flat tire butyl tube. Track lacrosse build complete. We are now back to two silver bikes contending for your heart's desire. I'm gonna go ahead and say that the track cross will always be leading purely based on nostalgia. That could change. I currently do have a very stubborn yet promising tubeless setup on this thing right now. Problem being the tires are not tubeless ready. So of course they want some time to allow for the sealant to build up around the bead so that air stops seeping out. But by tomorrow, I see that being a non-issue. It's funny, the box with this frame set in has been in here for a pretty substantial amount of time. I think we're probably getting on like two or three months that it's been here waiting to be built. And the whole reason that I've been holding off on it was I didn't want to build it with just any set of wheels. I wanted to be able to set it up tubeless. I decided that that was taking too long. I did happen to get a hold of some old wheels from like a pure fix or a fixation that were donated to the channel. Thank you very much, by the way. And today ended up being the day that I was like, all right, let's build this thing. It's nice enough out. I wanna go play bikes. So when I started to put it together and looked at all the forks that I had available, this one here, with the through axle kind of stuck its neck out and said, I want to be on it. But of course it had to use the front wheel that was with it. And I wasn't really interested in using a non-matching rear wheel. And lo and behold, we got what we got. The biggest annoyance of that is that I've had all these parts here this entire time. I guess it just takes starting a project to actually know what it is that you want to do. Literally no amount of planning would have came up with this configuration. But one thing is for sure, I have finally built a Poseidon that doesn't have brakes that work on it that is totally rideable. Now finally, yet so much more importantly, kickflip update day six. Now after all of these tries and all this progress, today they've just gotten worse. Ten more. Ten more. You're not even trying. 